Hey, I'm Connor Woodard, and I'm going to be releasing for free the most useful clips from my lighting and texturing in Blender and Substance Painter course from Thoughtful3D.com. The first thing that we're going to do is set up a neutral look development studio. This is a super important keystone concept that every 3D artist should understand. This course is actually structured in reverse with the end result in mind, because if we don't start at the end and work our way back, skill deficiencies and mistakes can cascade through the pipeline. For example, if you have a bad model, your unwraps aren't going to be very good. If you have have bad unwraps your textures aren't going to be very good if you have bad textures your shaders are going to stink if you have bad shaders your lighting will suck if you have bad lighting the whole render is garbage so if you want to be a master at any of those disciplines we start by making really clean renders let's get straight into it i'm just going to add in a sphere shift a uv sphere this is a big sphere. It's a one meter in radius sphere. So I'll bring this down to 0.5 so it's smaller. And I'll bring it up. I hit G to translate and then Z to only translate up until it's just barely on the floor. Just crashing through a tiny bit is okay. And then if I want to shade this to be smooth so it's not super faceted, I can right click on this and just hit Shade Smooth. Now I got a nice sphere. And I'm going to add a material to this so I can go over to my material over here, this little material properties, or I can go over to my shading tab where it already has the node editor down here. I'm going to set this node editor to the object and I'll hit new and it will automatically create a principled BSDF shader. The principled shader is a standard physically based rendering material. So in here, I'm going to set this up to be a default gray. So I'll call this 50% gray underscore capital M-A-T. I'll set my color to a value of 0.18, just like we would in any other rendering software. Our value is going to be 0.18 and our roughness is going to be 0.65. Now I have a default gray ball in here. I'm going to do the same thing for this studio background. I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to call this background M-A-T. And it is also going to be a value of 0.18 and a roughness of 0.65. And you can see all those little facets on the edge there. Not in love with those. So I'll just right click shade smooth. Doop. There we go. Now, if I pop over to my high quality render, well, I can't see anything because I don't have any lights. But if, if you do see something, it's likely because you're still an EV. I guess it's using the scene lights in the scene world, which is good. You want those on by default. I'm going to pop over to cycles. And then I will shift A to add a light. I'm going to add an area light. I'm going to bring this up. And all right, here we go. Check it out. We're starting to get nice ray trace shadows. Select this light. If you grab this little yellow dot, you can actually put it on the object that you want to point it towards. Like I want to point it over there. So it's kind of like using a flashlight, which is pretty fun. It's very simple and easy to use. So I'm going to point that right at the sphere pull it away a little bit and then brighten it up to maybe a 75 watt. There we go. That's a nice bright studio lamp. I'll straighten it out. Not that it really matters whether it's at an angle or not, but just take this dot and put it right there. Awesome. So now we have a 50% gray ball on a 50% gray background. The last thing that we really need to do is you notice that as time goes on, the render improves, right? It's increasing the amount of samples, which is decreasing the amount of noise and shadowy areas are taking a lot longer to denoise than other areas like the frontier. Now the viewport, you can see in the top left, it's at sample nine out of 1024. 10, right? 11 is getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. The longer that you hold it here, the more clean it will become. If you want to manipulate these controls even more. You just go into your render properties again, making sure our engine is set to cycles and you can set the min and max for the viewport. Let's say I just want eight samples as a maximum on the viewport. It will render until I have eight samples and then it will stop and it will stay pretty noisy. I'm going to create a new sphere here and move it over. I'm definitely going to pause my render, I'll even switch over to material preview because I'm asking it to do a little too much. So I'll hit shift D and I'll move this over. I'm going to turn on my overlays so I can see stuff again. Oh, I accidentally made a duplicate grid. That's what happened. And on this one, I'm going to remove that material by hitting this little X. By the way, you can see in here, this 50 gray mat, there are two users using it, which is this one and this one. And if I get rid of that one, then you can see it's, there's there's only one. If I add one and I add another one, 
it will actually tell you how many things in the scene are using that material. So that's super convenient too. delete those. And on this one, I'll add a new material and I'll set this one to Chrome and I will set it to 100% metallic and 0% roughness. And you can see that it's right now it's reflecting that, that viewport world because we're not using the scene world in this. If I turn that on, turn that on, then we're actually going to get Evie's version of what the render looks like, which is not bad, not bad. It's not as good as Cycles. Cycles is obviously a lot nicer because it's ray tracing, but you can do a lot of damage with this. You know, the problem is that if you fall in love with your lighting in this mode, you can be very surprised when it doesn't look like that when you're actually in a ray tracing mode. So I'm going to set up basic three-point lighting here, which is just a key, a fill, and a rim light. And I'm, I'm just using Eevee to, to see kind of what that looks like. And this little button right here will pop me to my render camera view, which I guess I don't have one in this scene. So that makes sense. I'll hit shift A and I will add a camera and I will take that camera. I will move it back, bring it up. And I'll just change this shader editor into another 3D viewport and pop that over to the render camera. And you notice that when I move this around, it doesn't actually move the camera. In order to move the camera, you need to open up this little window, hit view, and then lock camera to view. Now, when I move it around, I'm actually moving the camera around. And in here, I can set the, set things like the focal length. So maybe I'll set the focal length to a nice telescopic lens, like a 95 millimeter lens. That's a pretty massive lens. I'll frame these two spheres nice and pretty. And if I hit render on this, we'll see the whole thing. And I'm going to uncheck lock camera to view. So now, now if I zoom in or out, I'm actually just zooming in on what the camera sees. I'm not actually changing the camera. I'm not moving the camera. I'm just doing 2D translates. And there's a fun little trick here. If you hit control B, you can set the region inside of the viewport. So you're not rendering a bunch of stuff you won't see. If I just want to render this here, I'll just render that there. Right, just over here, just over there. So if I turn off my little viewport overlays, hey, there's a nice, pretty clean render. Now, this is all for the viewport. It's only going to go up to eight samples here, right? So it's going to stay nice and noisy. But when I do the actual rendered output, there's the viewport and then there's the render, right? I'm going to set the amount of max samples or a newer thing that came out in more recent versions of Blender is you can set the noise threshold, which is going to look to see how much noise is in each bucket. And it will continue to increase the samples until that noise threshold is hit. It will use a maximum of the amount that you set. So I set the maximum amount of 4K samples. You can also say, hey, I want this to render for eight hours, eight hours, right? And it will continue rendering until eight hours is up. It will get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner until eight hours is hit. So that's really convenient because if you go to bed at 10 p.m. and you want to check out the render at 8 a.m., then you can set this to 10 hours and you can just go to sleep and it will render until you wake up. So that's super duper convenient. I like to setting this to zero so it doesn't use a timer unless I have a restriction like that. And I just set the noise threshold to 0.01 and my max samples to 4K. And that is the quality of render that I used in the thumbnail for this class. You guys saw the gray ball and the chrome ball and it said clean renders on it. That was done with these settings. If I hit render, render image, it will bring up this little extra window here. So this is the Blender render viewer. And once this is finished, you can see it's at 14 out of 4K. It will tell you it's been going for 31 seconds, time remaining about two hours. And then when that's finished, I can hit image, save as, and it's done. And you can see there's some faceting there. I don't love that. So I'll probably, you know, select this sphere and I'll just go over to the modifiers tab and I'll add a subdivision here. Subdivision surface. So I think it only added it to the one. Yep. On here, I'll add a modifier, subdivision surface. Now, if I go back to this render viewer here and uh, I'm going to hit escape to stop it. And then because I, it, it will be F12 for you guys, but because I broke my hotkeys, I'm just going to hit render image again and start that over. And you can see, okay, that's a lot smoother. I like that. It's way smoother. And this is just going to sit here and crunch away. Now, adding an environment, an HDRI to the world shader like I had before is going to add in some detail to this blackness because nothing is pure black, right? So if we have a little bit of a studio in there, that's going to help with that. So I'll close this and I'll even do that. I'll go over here to my shader editor and I'll go over to my world. Or I can do it right here, right? 
and I'll hit shift A and I'll look for environment texture. I will, let's see, I think there's already one in here. Yep. If there's already one in the blender scene, I can just click on this button here, add in solitude night, plug that one in. I'm going to set the strength to like 0 .0, 0 0.1. So that way it's not contributing too much, but we'll get a little bit of reflections in there, right? As you can see in the EV render. And then I will go to render, render image, and we'll see a little bit has changed. And adding in those tiny, oh, that's actually a lot stronger than I thought it would be. So I would need to clean that up or probably better yet would use an interior, not an outdoor courtyard. And that would be how I set up this render. So that way we get really nice, really clean cycles, ray traced renders with a 50% gray ball. So we can actually create a neutral environment. And that is your homework for this week. Next week, I want to see your renders. We're going to critique your lighting. We're going to critique your rendering. And we're going to use this scene from now on to texture and shade the rest of the classes work. So once we have a neutral three-point lighting environment, we're going to bring in these different shaders. We're going to manipulate the shaders. We're going to figure out how the principal BSDF shader works. Then after that, we're going to learn about on texturing and how to use textures in those shaders. Then after that, we're going to learn about unwrapping in Blender. And then after that, we're going to create either a basic model that you can unwrap, texture, shade, light, and render yourself, or We'll find a free one online that we're able to do all those steps with together. We'll unwrap texture, shade, light, and render it all inside of Blender, except for the texture painting part, which will be done in Substance Painter.